cent. This is 1969 as Lincoln cent with double the obverse. Graded in mean state 64 by PCGS. The 1969 as double the obverse is an extremely desirable variety, having an estimated population of 40 to 50 pieces. According to Jaime Hernandez from PCGS, the 1969 as double the obverse cent was one of few coins ever to appear on America's most wanted list. Not because it was such a desirable coin, but because it was once considered to be a counterfeit. True 1969s double divers since today are extremely scarce. However, many new collectors confuse a 1969s double diver sense with machine doubling. A true 1969s double diver cent will not have doubling on the mint mark as the mint mark was punched into the die separately. This superb gem example ended up selling for $126,000 at Stax Bowers auction. Here is 1965 Martha Washington half dollar in mint state 67. Very rare and underappreciated modern pattern. The mint created these Martha Washington dies to test new compositions beginning in 1965, and they have been used in various other tests since, most notably in 1999 with a change over from the Susan B. Anthony dollar to the Sacagawea dollar. The verse depicts Martha Washington facing right and reverse shows three-fourths view of Mount Vernon, struck on a copper nickel clad planchet as adopted in 1965 with a reeded edge, rarity unlisted in jute. So it unique in Pollock. It was sold for $21,150 at Legend Rare Coin Auction. This is 1962 dated Jefferson Nickel in Mint State 67 plus with full steps. The 1962 date is not a particularly noteworthy issue within the long running Jefferson Nickel series. Struck to the extent of nearly 100 million pieces, the 1962 is often seen with die erosion. This piece is not an exception, as die flow lines appear on both sides, more prominently on the reverse where they show both in the fields and on Monticello. However, this piece shows a no questions five full step strike on reverse, apparently at the expense of the hair near Jefferson's ear. It was sold for $21,150 at Heritage Auctions. Moving on with his 1904 S Morgan Silver Dollar, graded in mint state 66 by PCGS, a simply outstanding example of this scarce, conditionally challenging Morgan Dollar from the final year of the original series, sharply struck with bountiful setting to softly frosted luster. Both sides are enhanced by light toning in the iridescent gold. The overall appearance is pristine and the quality is very close to an even higher gem mint state rating. The 1904S is one of the most elusive Morgan dollars in all grades, as much of the mintage of over 2.3 million pieces was likely melted under the Pittman Act in 1918. This neatly preserved specimen was bargained for $26,400 at Stax Bowers auction. Here is 1966 Kennedy half dollar in mint state 67. Registry set collectors will find this 40% silver Kennedy half issue a challenge to locate in high grade. The certified population at PCGS declines significantly in MS66, and superb gems are extremely rare. This 1967 example boasts a sharp strike and unabraded surfaces. Amber and sun gold hues appear around portions of the peripheries, leaving the interiors with just a glint of champagne color. It was sold for $9,987.50 at Heritage Auctions. Next, 1926S Lincoln Sentinel in Mint State 64 Plus, red condition. The 1926S has a low mintage by standards of this series, with just over 4.5 million pieces produced. It has long been regarded as a semi to full key date issue in all grades and the vast majority of collectors have settled for a worn example due to either availability or cost. Very scarce in all mint state grades. And in full red as here, the 1926S is a noteworthy rarity that always attracts excitement. Both sides of the vivid beauty exhibit dominant pinkish rose color. The peripheries adorned with warmer reddish orange. 
It is sharply struck and has a satiny and smooth appearance that is suggestive of an even higher grade. It was sold for $43,200 at Stax Bowers auction. Moving on with his 1943 Washington Quarter with double diverse circulated coin in AU58 condition. AU is a designation standing for about uncirculated. The guidebook double die variety is similar in appearance to the also famous 1943s double die. In God we trust and the date are strongly doubled, as are initial letters in liberty, lustrous and minimally abraded with delicate almond gold and stone gray toning. It was sold for $10,281.25 at heritage auctions. Here is 1940 Jefferson Nickel in PR69 condition, reverse of 1940 variety. It is the earliest certified Jefferson Nickel in PR69 condition and claims a low mintage of 14,158 coins. Simply put, this spectacular representative would make a monumental addition to any advanced set. Rings of mauve, green, blue, rose, and gold patina encompass each side. The effect is slightly dusky on the reverse for all intents and purposes. The surfaces of these amazing specimens are flawless. There is a single microscopic fleck on Jefferson's chin, but that is all that stands in the way of pristine PR70 designation. It was sold for $15,275 at heritage auctions. This is 1977D Kennedy half dollar in mean state 62, popular transitional error coin struck on a 40% silver planchet. The 40% silver alloy, a holdover from 1965 debasement, was supposed to have been struck for final time on the 1976S bicentennial half dollar and Ike dollar, but it happened so that a very small quantity of misplaced or leftover 40% silver planchets ended up between dies for the next year coinage, lustrous, lightly toned, sharply struck and well preserved. It was sold for $5,875 at heritage auctions. This is 1939 Washington Quarter in Mean State 68, CAC proven rarity, marvelous superb gem example of this early Washington Quarter date. Radiant mint bloom shines from under a pleasing subtle pastel toning. Peach icy blue and apricot tones blend nicely on the both sides. It was sold for $5,000 at Legend Rare Coin Auctions. And this is 1964 Jefferson Nickel Mated Error Pair, highly elusive error 5 cent pieces. Coin number 1 is designated as an obverse die cap. Coin number 2 is certified as a reverse die cap. Both coins are identically graded. The planchet for the coin number one was fed first into the press. Its first strike was normal, but it stuck to the verse die and served as a surrogate die for a series of newly fed planchets. The force of the strikes and the presence of two coins within the die chamber forced the obverse rim to rise and wrap around the top of a verse die. This highly elusive pair was bargained for $5,170 at Heritage Auctions. Thanks for watching guys, if you liked the video don't forget to hit thumbs up and subscribe. Have a nice day.